This is Jean Crane M2S. It's small, it's lightweight, but don't let it fool you. It's powerful. On this gimbal, you can put your mobile phone or your full frame camera or anything in between. Isn't that awesome? All right, let me give you some more information about this gimbal first, and then I promise we'll get out and play with it. We'll put it to the test and see how it performs, shall we? At the first glance, I fell in love with the design of this gimbal. I love how Zion put this button in front of the gimbal to simply change it to selfie mode. There's also a record button on the gimbal that allows you to start recording very fast. There's an M button for changing the modes, and there's a red button on the left side that turns the built-in light on and off. And by pushing it up, you can increase the light. This gimbal also uses a USB-C port for charging, which will fully charge the device in less than two hours. And that gives you 10 hours of use after that. How lovely is that? At this point, I feel like I need to add that the Crane M3 and the Crane M2S are almost identical, with M2S being a little smaller and more affordable. Seriously, working with this gimbal is a breeze. In this shot, you see that I have set up a Sony a7 III with a 24mm Viltrox lens on top of the gimbal. And by adding the mobile phone holder, you can easily mount any mobile phone on this gimbal. Easy. As I'm sure you've noticed, there is a LED light built-in on this gimbal, which would come very handy when you're vlogging or when there's not enough light in the environment. That's a great feature, but as a cherry on the top, there's also a few different modes on this light, which you could use as you see fit. All right, now let's go watch some beautiful footage, which I've shot using this little powerful friend. After receiving this gimbal, I immediately decided to use it on a trip, and man, I love how it came out. Stay tuned and I'll show you the results at the end of this video. Using this gimbal for a while now, I'm truly amazed by how a small gimbal like this could support a full-frame camera and offer such smooth shots. If I want to give my personal opinion about this, and believe me, I have tested many gimbals before, this is by far the most comfortable one that I've ever used. Let me tell you, this is really lightweight, it easily, easily fits in any backpack pocket and I could access it at any moment and use it with my mobile phone or my camera. Call me a happy man. But hey, let's not get too carried away here. As much as this sounds like the perfect gimbal, it has a few drawbacks, so let's talk about this. It's basically made for mobile phones and lightweight cameras, so obviously don't expect to put a full-frame camera with a heavy lens on the top and take it to a professional set. But for most day-to-day -day uses or where you want to travel light, that would be perfect. Look at these shots, for example, which were taken using an A7 III and a 24mm Viltrox in a pan-follow mode. No problem. Alright, now I'm gonna go ahead and share with you some techniques that might come handy when you travel. 
In the first shot, I wanted to establish the environment and show more of that. So I walk towards the character from the distance and share more of the environment in the shot with the audience. My next shot is a parallel shot, meaning the camera moves parallel to the subject as he walks. Look at the way I'm holding the gimbal and how I walk to make this shot. You have to be as comfortable as possible to make smooth moves. The low angle shot. This makes everything more dramatic and by shooting the subject's face from a lower angle, you kind of make everything look bigger and wider, hence the drama. The vertical mode. This mode will help me be kind of more creative by helping me make in-camera transitions easier and connect the shots more seamlessly. The POV mode kind of do the same thing for me. I could rotate the camera and make shots like this. The PF or pan follow mode. It's for the times when I'm chasing the subject from the back because the shot is straight and the subject stays in the middle of the frame, allowing me to chase and run without the gimbal rotating and messing with the framing. You know, I'm a big, big fan of in-camera transitions and try to stay away from software transitions as much as possible. This gimbal makes this process a lot easier and help me be more creative. These shots are a great example of that. Take a look. Alright friends, we've successfully made it to the end. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I'll see you on the next one.